Greetings to you, dear senior high students of St. Martin Montessori School, your teachers, advisors, and the rest of the viewers. I want to thank teacher Lydia de Guzman for this opportunity to share my stories, experiences, and learnings in line with music, hoping this will inspire you, especially those who have passion and interest in this particular art form. <laughs> RDV Prod I am Randall De Vera, a gospel singer, violinist, and pianist. I also do freelance writing, affiliate marketing, and YouTube. I am from Binangonan, just some kilometers away from your school. My mother used to teach here back in the 1990s. Her sister, my tita, and two of my cousins also spent some years here teaching and studying before they migrated to Canada in 2009. So, though I've never been a student here, I grew up hearing a lot about your institution and I look up to it because of your commitment to academic excellence. As your motto says, we gather light to scatter. Continue to uphold that in whatever you do, wherever you are. How do you define music personally? Each of us may have a different meaning to it, but generally we define it as the language of the soul. It is a medium through which we express our inner thoughts and passions using sound and silence. A more technical definition suggests that it is a form of art consisting of sound in time that expresses ideas and emotions through rhythm, melody, harmony, and color. Now, how significant is music to us? When we travel, what is our common pastime? Aside from snacks or maybe chatting with our company, what activity do we usually do, especially when we are alone? Listening to music, right? When we are lonely or depressed, what do we do to brighten our atmosphere? We have different ways of dealing with this, but listening to inspiring music commonly helps a lot in elevating our spirit. When we are happy, inspired, or motivated, we play upbeat or lively music. During special occasions like birthday parties, weddings, reunions, and others, we never miss playing music, right? When we go to church, there's still music. When we study, most of us pick up our phones and play music using our earphones. Office employees sometimes play music from the radio or karaoke while working. And of course, for musicians and music teachers like me, music is more of a passion or calling. We perform and teach. There are a lot more, but the point is music is a very significant part of human life. Let us look at some of our famous Filipino artists. Number one, Leia Salonga, the Broadway diva or the Disney princess. Best known for her roles in musical theater such as Les Miserables, one of the coaches for The Voice of the Philippines. She is personally one of my favorite singers because of her clear diction, discipline in phrasing and breathing, perfect intonation, heartfelt emotions, stage presence, and many more. Second, Ryan Kayabiab, also known as Mr. C, a musician, composer, and conductor. The National Artist of the Philippines for Music in 2018. He is one of my favorite composers because his songs are simple and easy to sing yet meaningful. Number three, Regine Velasquez Alcacid, a singer, actress, and record producer, aka Asia's Songbird. She is loved and admired by many because of her high vocal range and superb technical ability. She is truly a diva. Last but not least, the Philippine Madrigal Singers, also known as the Mads. One of the Philippines' major choral groups, founded by national artist Andrea Veneracion, 
the first world choir to win the European Grand Prix for choral singing twice in 1997 and 2007. They are one of my favorite choirs because of their discipline, talented members, singing prowess, and commendable mission and vision. Now, my own personal story, my musical journey. Well, I started singing at the age of three or four. My parents tell me that I would hum notes like mm, they said that I could sing in tune. At six, my kindergarten teacher, Ma'am El Natikubay, discovered that I could sing, so he encouraged me to perform in church, which became my first public performance. At seven, I learned the piano, but it was not a typical, Mom, I want to take piano lessons, or Son, I want you to take piano lessons. There was no plan. It was like this. My mom back then was a piano teacher. Every Sunday, students would come to our house to take lessons. She never taught me, but I would try to punch the keys playing the same tunes that I heard from their classes every time they would finish. She was surprised that I could play by ear. From that, she discovered my Oido talent, which means playing by ear. She decided to teach me, but funny because I didn't take her seriously. Maybe because of familiarity, like, oh, well, she's my mom anyway, I'm comfortable with her. And so, when I turned eight or nine, she had me take formal piano lessons with another teacher. And yes, I took her seriously. I learned so much, not just on note reading and music theory, but also on widow playing. At 10, I joined a singing ministry called Samahan ng Mga Adventistang Mga Awit at Musikero or SAM. It was a group of Filipino Adventist singers. During the auditions, I remember crying because of culture shock and more importantly because I felt insecure that I didn't know how to make facial expressions and hand gestures when singing. Because since 6 years old, no one taught me that. So I would just sing with my voice, no expression at all. But with the help of our trainers and observing other singers, I gradually gained confidence until I could sing well. I had many good memories from this group. Then at 13, I started learning the violin under teacher Homer Ilao through the Suzuki method. It didn't become that difficult in terms of note reading because I already had a music theory background from my piano lessons. The only challenge was learning how to play the instrument. Soon I started teaching music myself and playing for church, school, weddings, and others. It has become my ministry and living at the same time. Now, in this pandemic season, the restriction of attending music lessons or teaching face-to-face -face challenged me to utilize the internet to go on. For instance, I started teaching the violin online via Zoom, though it was not that convenient. I also started joining virtual choirs. Despite the distance wherein we couldn't sing together physically, technology has made it possible for us to sing together virtually. But one very significant accomplishment I've done to keep myself productive during this pandemic is trying YouTube. I had a channel since 2013, but it was more of a hobby. I never took it seriously. I just uploaded videos whenever I wanted to or felt like it. And in seven years, guess what? I only gained 18 subscribers. Well, what can you expect? I have never learned YouTube and grew a channel until I got bored staying at home in quarantine and decided to rebrand it or activate it to what is now RDV Prod. And yes, in six months, I hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, which are the minimum requirements for monetization. My channel is currently earning quite a fair amount, but I badly need to work harder on my content to boost engagement. So, yeah, I'm almost done. With everything I've shared today, what is my point? And what can you learn from this? 
Well, we have seen how influential or significant music is to our lives. Even if you don't consider yourself passionate for or into music, there's no doubt that it helps you in any little way. More so if you have that interest and gift, I encourage you to hone it. You can take lessons on any instrument of your preference. You can join choirs, ensembles, orchestras, and many more. But above all, use your talent for the glory of the Lord. He is the source of all gifts, so using it is our way of giving back. This is all. I hope you've learned something and gained some inspiration. I am Randall. Hope to see you soon. Take care and God bless. RDV Prod